We do not accuse nature of immorality when it sends us a thunderstorm and makes us wet. Why do we call the harmful man immoral? Because in the latter case we assume a voluntarily commanding free will, in the former, necessity. But this distinction is an error. And then, we do not call even intentionally harming immoral under all circumstances. One unhesitatingly kills a fly intentionally, for example, merely because one does not like its buzzing. One punishes the criminal intentionally, and does him harm so as to protect ourselves and society. In the first instance, it is the individual who, to preserve himself or even merely to avoid displeasure, intentionally does harm. In the second, it is the state. All morality allows the intentional causing of harm in the case of self-defense, that is, when it is a matter of self-preservation. But these two points of view suffice to explain all evil acts perpetrated by men against men. One desires pleasure, or to ward off displeasure. It is always, in some sense, a matter of self-preservation. Socrates and Plato are right. Whatever man does, he always does the good. That is to say, that which seems to him good, useful, according to the relative degree of his intellect, the measure of his rationality.